from around the globe, it's the Q with digital coverage of DockerCon Live 2020. Brought to you by Docker and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the Cube's coverage here at the DockerCon virtual headquarters, anchored desks here in the Palo Alto studios. We're quarantined in this virtual event of DockerCon. I'm John Furrier, host, along with Jenny Burchio, John Kreisa, Peter McKee, a variety of other folks who are moderating and weaving in and out of the sessions. But here we have a live sessions with Justin Graham, vice president of the product group at Docker. Justin, thanks for coming in. DockerCon virtual 20. Absolutely, happy to be here from my home office in Seattle, Washington, where it is almost sunny. You got a great backdrop we're seeing in, in the chat. You got a bandwidth, a lot of bandwidth there. Looking good, <laughs> smiling. What a day for Docker. Global event, 77,000 people registered. It's just been an awesome party. It's been, it's been great. I, I could hardly sleep last night. I was up at five this morning. Uh, I was telling my son about it at breakfast. I, uh, I interrupted his, his Zoom school uh, and he talked a little bit about it. So it's just, it's been awesome. I'm, I'm, I've been waiting for this interview slot for, for the most of the day. So yeah, you got to tell the kids to get off downloading those gigabytes of new game updates and get off Netflix. I, I hear you, but you got good bandwidth. Let's get, let's get into it. I love your position. VP of product at a company that's super technical, a lot of software, a lot of cloud. You got a good view of the landscape of what the current situation is relative to the product, the deals that are going on, when this is announced here, Sneak, Microsoft expansion, multiple clouds, as well as the roadmap and community interaction. So you got a lot going on. You got the, your fingers in, in all the action. Um, when you get the keys to the kingdom, as we say in the product side of things. What's the story today from your perspective around DockerCon? What's the most important thing people should know about of what's going on with this new Docker? Obviously ease of use, we've heard a lot about. What's going on? So I'll start with people. We are hyper-focused on uh, helping developers and development teams build and ship applications. That's, that's what we're focused on. That's what we wake up every day thinking about. Um, and if we double click on that a minute in terms of what that means, you know, if you think about where source control ends and having a running application on um, on some production compute in the cloud on the other end, uh, there's a whole lot that needs to happen in the middle uh, of those two things. Um, and, and we hear from our development community and we see from those folks, there's a lot of complexity and choices and options and things in the middle there. And we really want to help streamline uh, the creation of those of those pipelines to get those apps moving uh, to production as fastly and as quickly as possible. And you can see it in some of the results and some of the sessions, one session coming up at around four, around how pipelining with Docker help increase the problem solving around curing cancer, really solving, saving people's lives to the front lines with COVID-19 to business value. So you're seeing again, Docker coming back into the fold relative to the simple value proposition of making things super easy for developers, but on top of the mega trend of microservices. So, you know, outside of some of these awesome sessions where there's learning, the hardcore sessions here at DockerCon are around microservices, from monitoring, you name it. Not a trivial thing, because you got stateless and state, all kinds of new things are going on with multiple clouds. So, not an easy no. road to kind of grok or understand. You have to manage that. What's, what are people paying attention to? What, what is happening? Yeah, I think, you know, first off, I'll say, you know, one of the things that I'm super passionate about is increasing uh, access to technology. So the, the greatest and best ideas can get bubbled up to the top and exposed no matter where they come from, whom they come from, uh, et cetera. And I think one of the things um, that, that makes that hard or that makes that complex is just how much developers need to understand or even emerging developers need to understand um, just to even get started, um, you know, what, you know, languages, IDEs, um, packaging, building, um, where do you ship to? If you pick uh, a certain cloud or endpoint, you have to understand networking and storage and identity models. There's just so much you have to absorb. Um, so we're, we're hyper-focused on how can we make that complex super easy and these are all the things that we get asked questions on um, and we get interacted with on our public roadmap um, and other places uh, to, to help with. So that's, you know, the biggest things that you're going to see coming out of 
Docker starting you know, now and moving forward will be serving that end. Let's talk about some of the new execution successes you guys had, obviously uh, Sneak is security shifting left. That's a major, I think a killer win for Sneak, obviously getting access to millions of developers use Docker and vice versa. You get you know, uh, into the shifting left, you get to, you know, security in that workflow piece. Microsoft expanded relationships, interesting as well, because you know, Microsoft's got a robust tech developer ecosystem. They have their own tools. So, so you see this symbiotic relationship with Docker again coming into the fold where there's a lot of working together going on. Explain that meaning, what does that mean? So you know, on, the, you know, on the back of the refocus Docker and our hyper focus on developers and development teams, one of the core tenets of the how, so you know, the before that was the what, this is the how we're going to go do it, um, is by partnering with the ecosystem as much as possible and bringing the best of breed um, in front of developers in a way uh, that they can most easily consume. Um, so if you take the sneak partnership, um, that that was just a match, you know, a match made in developer dopamine, as uh, as Sean Connolly would say. Um, you know, we're hyper focused on developers and development teams, and sneaks and sneak is also hyper focused on making it as easy as possible for developers and development teams to stay secure, um, ship fast, and stay secure. Um, so it really just matched up super well. And then if you think, well, how do we even get there in the first place? Well, we launched our public roadmap a few months ago, which is the first that Docker's ever done. And one of the first things that comes onto that public roadmap is image, vul image vulnerability scanning. Um, for Docker, at that time, it was really just focused on Docker Hub in terms of how it came through the roadmap. It got upvoted a bunch, there's been some interaction. And then we thought, well, why just like checking that box isn't enough, right? It's just, just checking the box what can we do that really brings the sort of the, the promise of the Docker experience to something like this? And you know, Sneak was an immediate uh, an immediate thought in that respect. And we we just you know we just really got in touch with them and and we just saw eye to eye almost immediately. Um, and and then you know off off the rest went. The second piece of it was really around well, why just do it in Docker Hub? Um, what about Docker Desktop? You know, it's downloaded 80,000 times a week, and it's got 2.2 million active installations. You know, on a on a weekly basis. You know, what about those folks? So we we decided to raise the bar again and say, hey, let's make sure that this partnership includes not only Docker Hub but Docker Desktop. So you'll be able when we launch this to scan your images locally on Docker Desktop. Awesome. I see you getting some phone calls in there. You got to hit this, hit the end button real quick. I saw that in there. Got an interesting chat I wanted. It's kind of lightening things up a little bit uh, from Brian Stevenson. He says, hey, Justin, what glasses are those? So he wants to know <laughs> what kind of glasses you're wearing. So they're, yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're glasses that, that, uh, that I think signal that I turned 40 last year. <laughs> it's, say it's for your uh, gaming, your uh, gaming uh, environments, uh, the blue light glasses, uh, you know? Uh, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say uh, where, where they came from because it's probably not going to, that's probably not going to engender a bunch of positive good, but they're they're, they're nice glasses. They yeah. they help me see the the computer screen and make sure that I'm not uh, fat fingering my CLI commands. Well, us old guys need the glasses. Certainly, I do. Um, speaking of old and young, this brought up a conversation since that came up. I'll just quickly riff into this because I think it's interesting. You know, Kelsey Hightower during that innovation panel talked about how this de class the developers. Some people want to just do, you know, applications. Some want to get under the hood, up and down the stack. I was riffing with John Chrysler around kind of the new generation, the kids coming in, the young guns. You know, they have all this goodness at their disposal. They didn't have to load Linux on a desktop and rack and stack servers, uh, all that good stuff. So it's, it's so much more capable today. Um, and so this speaks to this modern error and the expansion overall of open source and the expansion of the people involved. New expectations and new experiences are required. So as a product person, how do you think about that? Because you, know, you don't want to just build for the old, but you got to build for the new as well as the experience changes and expectations are different. What's your thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, this, I think about sort of my start in this industry as a, as a really good answer to that. I mean, um, I remember as a kid, I think I asked for a computer for every birthday and Christmas from when I was six until I got one given to me by a friend's parents in 1994 on my way off to, uh, off to boarding school. And, you know, so it took that long just for me to get a computer into my hands. 
And then um, when I when I was in school, th th there wasn't a, any real sort of computer science or coding courses until my senior year. And then I had to go to a, an engineering school at Rensselaer to, you know, to sort of get that experience at the time. I mean, just just to even get into this industry and learn how to code was just I mean, so many things had to go my way, right? And then Microsoft hired me out of college, another thing that sort of fell my way, right? So like, like th this, this work that we're doing is just so important because um, I had a lot of, I worked hard, but I had a lot of luck, but, like, but not everybody's gonna have some of that, right? Have that luck. So how can we make it just as easy as possible for folks to get started wherever you are? Um, you know, if, you're, if you have a family and you're working another full-time job, can you spend a few hours at night learning Docker? We can help you with that. Download Docker Desktop. We have tutorials. We have great docs. We have great captains who teach courses, right? So, um, so everything we're doing is sort of in service of that uh, of that vision and, and, and that democratization of, of 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 getting into the ideas. And and I, I love what Kelsey said in terms of let's stop talking about the tech and let's stop talking about what you what what folks can do with the tech. Um, and, and that's you know very, very poignant. So we're really working on, like, we'll take care of all the complexity behind the scenes and all of the uh, the VMs and the launching of containers and the network, like, we'll, we'll help, we'll try to help take care of all that complexity behind the, uh, behind the curtain so that you can just focus on getting your idea built um, as a developer. Yeah, and you mentioned Kelsey again, he had a great story about his daughter and serverless. And I was joking on Twitter that his daughter convinced him that serverless is great. Of course, we know that Kelsey already loves serverless. So, but he's pointing out this developer dopamine. He didn't say it, that's Sean's word, but that's really what his daughter wanted to do was show her friends a website that she built, not get into, hey, look, I just did a Kubernetes cluster. I mean, it's not like, so, I mean, but, but pick your, your swim lane, right? This is what it's all about now. Yeah, I, I hope I have. I hope I never. I hope my son never has to understand what what uh, what a service mesh is or a proxy, right? Um, yeah. I just hope he just <laughs> learns how to learns a language and just learns how to bring an idea to life, and all the rest of it is is just behind the curtain. When he said I had a parenting moment, I thought he was going to say something like, "But like, oh, my kid did say no." I had to describe whether it's a low level data structure or <laughs> you know, just use serverless. Um, shifting gears on the the product roadmap for Docker. Can you share how folks can learn about it? And can you give some commentary on what you're thinking right now? I know you guys put it on GitHub. Is there a link available? Yeah, absolutely, what very simple. GitHub.com slash Docker slash roadmap. Um, we, we tried to be very, very poignant about how we, how we named that so it, was, uh, so it was as easy as, as possible. We, we launched it a few months ago. Um, it, was a, it was a first in terms of, uh, of Docker publicly sharing um, its, its roadmap and, and what we're thinking and what we're working on. And you'll, you'll find um, very clear instructions of how to post issues and get started, um, what our code of conduct is, uh, and then you can just get started. And we even have a template for you to get started and submit an issue and talk to, about, talk to us about it. And internally, um, my team and, and many of our engineers as well, we triage um, what we see changing and coming into the public roadmap two to three times a week. Um, so for, for a half an hour to 45 minutes at a time, and then we're on Slack uh, batting around ideas that are coming in and saying how we can, uh, how we can improve those. So we, you know, for everyone out there, we really do pay attention to this, you know, very frequently. Um, and we, we iterate on it and the image vulnerability scanning is one, you know, one of those great examples. Uh, and you can see some other things that were, uh, that we're working on up there. So I, I, I will say this though, there, there, there has been some continual ask for a Linux version of Docker desktop. Um, so uh, I, I will commit that if we get 500 upvotes on that, that we will triage and figure out how to get that done over, um, over a period of time. Okay, you heard it, upvote, 500 upvotes triage and get that. And is there a shipping date on that if they get the 500 votes? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I can't commit to a shipping date yet, but but it's on the public roadmap, so you'll know when we're working on it and when we're uh, when we're getting there. I want before I get into your session you had with the captains, which is a very geeky session, getting under the hood, uh, more on the business side. The tailwind, obviously, for Docker is the microservices trend. What containers has enabled is just going to continue to get more awesome and complex, but also a lot of value and agility and all the things you guys are talking about. So that obviously is going to be a, a tailwind for you. But as you guys look at that piece of it, um, specifically the business value, how is Docker um, positioned? Because a lot of the use cases are 
no one really starts out microservices from a clean sheet of paper. Either we heard some talks here at DockerCon where you know, the financial services company said, hey, it's simple stack, and then it became feature creep, which became a monolith. And then they had to you know, move that technical debt into a much more polyglot system where you have multiple tools and, you, and there's a lot of things going on. That seems to be the trend. That also speaks to the legacy environment that most enterprises have. Could you share your view on how that, how Docker fits into those worlds? Because you're either coming from a simple stack that more often got successful and you're going to go microservice or you have legacy that you want to decouple and make it highly cohesive. So your thoughts. So, so the, the, the simple answer is Docker can help on both ends, right? Um, so, so you, you know, I, I think there, there, as these new technologies sort of gain momentum and get talked about a bunch and sort of get rapid, um, rapid adoption and rapid uh, hype, then you know, the, the, there almost can seem to be this uh, this this wall that builds up where people start to think, well, maybe my thing isn't modern enough, or maybe my team's not modern enough, or maybe I'm not modern enough to use this. So, like, I'm just, you know, there's 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 too much of a of a hurdle to get over, and that, and, and we, you know, that we don't see that 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 at all. There, there's always a way to to get started, um, even even thinking about the other other thing. And I'd say, you know. One, we can help. Uh, let us know, ping us. We'll we'll be happy to chat with you. But start small, right? You know, take if you're if you're in a large enterprise and you're you have a, a long legacy stack and a bunch of legacy apps. You know, think about the smallest thing that you can start with, and you can begin to break off, uh, break off of that, and, and, and as a proof of concept, um, even by just downloading Docker Desktop um, and, and, and Visual Studio Code, uh, and just getting started with breaking off a small piece. Right and see and improve the model, and, and I think that's where that's where Docker can be really helpful in in introducing you to this paradigm and pattern shift of containers and uh, containerized packaging and microservices and production run. And certainly, any company coming out of this post pandemic is going to need to have a growth strategy that's going to be based on apps, that's going to be based on the projects that they're currently working, double down on those and kind of sunset the ones that aren't or fix the legacy seems to be a major tail. And also, the second bit is when you're like, you're going to also have to, as a company, you're going to also have to start something new uh, or, or many new things um, to, to innovate for your customers and keep up with the times and, and, and the latest technology. So start to think about how you can ensure that the new things that you're doing uh, are, are starting off in a containerized way using doc, using Docker to help you get there, right? If, yeah. if the legacy pieces are, um, may not be able to move as quickly or, 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 or there's more required there, just think about the new things you're going to do and start new uh, in that respect. Well, let's bring some customer um, scenarios to the table. Pretend I'm a customer, you're, we're talking. Hey, Justin, you're looking good. Hey, I love Docker, love the polyglot, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know what? And I want to get your response to this. And I say, DevOps won't work here where we, where we are. It's just not a good fit. What do you say to the, when you hear things like that? Uh, so see see my previous comment about the wall that builds the the wall that builds up right so um, so the the an, the answer is and I remember hearing this by the way about agile you know years ago when when agile development and agile processes began to to come in and take hold and and, and take over for sort of waterfall processes right it's it's you know what what you what you what I hear customers really saying is man this is really hard this is super hard I don't know where to start it's very hard. How can you help help me figure out where to start? And that is one of the things that we're very, very, very clearly working on, right? So first off, um, we just um, our docs team um, who, who do great work just made an unbelievable update to our the Docker documentation uh, homepage, docs.docker.com. Um, before you were sort of met with a wall of text and a long left navigation um, that if you didn't know what you were doing, you how would you know where to go? Uh, now you can go there and there's six very clear paths for you to follow. Do you want to get started? Are you looking for a product manual, uh, et cetera? So if you're just looking for where to get started, just click on that. Um, that'll give you a great start. When you download Docker Desktop, um, there's now an onboarding tutorial that will walk you through getting your first application started. So um, there are ways for you uh, for you to, to, to help and get started. And then uh, we have a great group of Docker captains, um, Brett Fisher, many others who are also instructors um, we can absolutely put you in touch with them um, 
for some online coursework um, that they're that they deliver as well. So there's there's many resources available to you. That we, like let us help you just get over the hump of getting started. Yeah, and Jenny and on the community side and Peter McKee, we're talking about some libraries are coming out, some educational stuff coming around the corner as well. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, question for you, uh, personal question: Can you share a proud DevOps Docker moment that you could share with the audience? Oh wow! So so many to so many to uh, uh, so many to go through. So um, so I, you know, I, I think a few things come to mind over the past few weeks. So, so for for everyone that uh, that hasn't known, we we, we uh, launched some some exciting new pricing plans uh, last week um, for for Docker. So um, you can now get um, quite a bit of value for seven dollars a month um, in our in our pro plan. Um, but the you know the amount of work that the team had to do to get there um, was just an incredible thing, and you know just watching how the team how the team operated and how the team got there and, and just how they were turning on a dime um, with, with decisions that were being made, uh, and I'm seeing the same thing through some of our teams that are building the image vulnerability scanning feature. Um, you, you know, I, I won't I won't quote the number, but it's there's a very small number of people working on that feature that are creating an incredible thing for customers. So it's just how we think every day um, because we, you know, we know we're, we're actually tr almost trying to productize how we work, right? Um, and, and bring that to uh, the customer. Awesome. And your take on DockerCon virtual, obviously uh, we're all in this situation. Um, the content's been rich on the site. You were just on the captain's program earlier in the day. Yes. Uh, Docker, Brett's cap, uh, captain, like a marathon session. Um, did they grill you hard, or what's what was uh, what was your experience on the the captain's feed? So, so the, 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 I love I love the captain's feed. Uh, we 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 did a, a run of that for the Docker birthday a few months ago um, with my um, my coworker Justin Cormack. Um, uh, so yes, there are two Justins uh, that that work at Docker. Um, I got the internal Justin Slack handle. He got the external the community Slack Justin handle. So we we split the we split the goods there. Um, but you know, lot, lots of questions about how to get started. I mean, I think there was one really good question there. Someone was saying, asking for advice on uh, on just how to get started as someone who wants to be a new engineer or get into get into coding. And I think we're we're seeing a lot of this. Uh, I, I even have a good friend who, um, who whose wife was a very successful uh, and still is a very successful person in the marketing field, um, and and is you know learning how to code and, and wants to wants to. You know, do a career switch, right? So, yeah. um, it, it's it, it's really it's really exciting. Docker really exciting. Con is virtual. We heard Kelsey Hightower. We heard James Governor talk about events. Going to be more about group conventions getting together, whether they're small, medium, or large. Um, what's your take on Docker Con virtual, or in general, what makes a great conference these days? Because we'll soon get back to the physical space, but I think the genie's out of the bottle. That this digital space has no boundaries. It's limitless in creativity. We're just scratching the surface. What makes a great event in your mind? I, I think I think so, and I, I go back to thinking. You know, I've probably flown, I've probably flown six hundred thousand miles in the past three years, right? It, you know, lots of time away from my family, lots of time away from my son, um, and and now that we you know we're all in this situation together in terms of um, being sheltered in place in the global pandemic, and you know. We're executing an event that has ten times more participation from attendees than we had in our in-person event. And I sat back in my chair this morning and, and I was thinking, my, did I really even did I really need to fly that six hundred thousand miles in the past three years? Like that's you know, I think James Governor brought it up earlier today. I, I just I really think the world has changed under uh, you know underneath us. It, it's just going to be really hard to you know this will all be over eventually. Um, you know. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we get to a vaccine really soon. And then, you know, folks will start to feel like the world's a little bit more back to quote unquote normal. But man, I'm going to really have to ask myself, like, do I really need to get on this airplane and fly wherever it is? Like, why can't I just, you know, do it from my home office and, you know, have, you know, feed my son breakfast and take him to school and then see him in the evening? Um, plus, second, like I mentioned before, in terms of access, um, the, like no in-person event will be able to compete ever with the type of access that this type of a platform provides. Um, there just aren't like, you know, fairly or not unfairly, they're just people just, lots of people just cannot travel to certain places. Um, 
uh, for lot for lots of different reasons, uh, monetary pro be probably being primary. Um, and it's our it's not their job to figure out how to get to the thing. It's our job to figure out how to get the the tech and the access and the learning to them, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so uh, I I'm super committed uh, to that, and, and I'll be asking the question continually. And I think my my internal colleagues will will la are probably laughing now because I I've been beating the drum of like, why do we ever have to do anything in person anymore? Like, <laughs> let's expand the access. <laughs> yeah, expand the access. And what's great too is the CEO was in multiple chat streams. So you could literally, it's almost beam in there like Star Trek uh, and just, you can you can be more places that doesn't require that spatial limitations. And I yeah. think face to face will be good intimate, you know, more party like environment, more bonding or where social face to face <laughs> is more impactful. A few and that we, we, we do have to figure out how to have the attendee party virtually. So, you know, yeah. we have to figure out how to get some great electronic or you know, band or something, you know, to play a virtual show and like what we'll to ship everybody a beverage. I don't well, know. We'll, we'll, we'll co-create with Docker the Cube pub and have <laughs> beer uh, for everybody if they at some point. <laughs> Justin, great insight. Thank you for coming on and sharing the roadmap, update on the product and your insights into um, the tech as well as events. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank everyone for attending. Congratulations on all the work on the product. Docker, going to the next level, microservices is a tailwind, but it's about productivity, simplicity. Justin, the product, head of the product for Docker, VP of product on here in theCUBE, DockerCon 2020, I'm John Furrier. Stay with us for more continuous coverage on theCUBE track we're on now. We're streaming live. These sessions are immediately on demand. Check out the calendar. There's 43 sessions submitted by the community. Jump in, they're their own container of content. Get in there, pun intended, and chat and meet people and learn. Thanks for watching. Stay with us for more after this break.